The spread of modern humans into Europe is a controversial topic in paleoanthropology, and most paleoanthropologists have argued that the transition represents a relatively straightforward replacement of one hominin taxon by another. There is consensus that 60,000 years ago Europe was exclusively occupied by Homo neanderthalensis, who produced stone artifacts classified by archaeologists as Middle Paleolithic, until the continent was occupied by anatomically modern humans, who produced a variety of artifacts assigned to the Upper Paleolithic. There is considerable disagreement, however, about how this transition occurred. Early European modern humans have historically been referred to as Cro-Magnons in scientific literature until around relatively recently, when the term anatomically modern humans became more popular. Cro-Magnons were the first early modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, to settle in Europe, continuously occupying the continent from as early as 56,800 years ago. They interacted and interbred with the indigenous Neanderthals, aka Homo neanderthalensis who went extinct around 40,000 years ago, although some populations may have survived in Russia for longer. Cro-Magnon cavemen are often represented in front of a cave or fighting a dangerous animal, wielding stone, bone, or wooden tools for combat, and dressed in a fur cloak. Neanderthals are often depicted with unkempt hair, and usually with a bushy beard. Indeed, the caveman archetype is quite popular in media and can be portrayed as highly muscular, hairy, pale-skinned and primitive, and to represent a wild and animalistic character, drawing on the characteristics of a wild man. But the first early European modern humans would have had dark skin, natural selection for lighter skin would not begin until 30,000 years ago, and lighter skin would not become prevalent in Europe until the Bronze Age. The early European modern humans' arsenal included spears, spear throwers, harpoons, and throwing sticks and Paleolithic wolf dogs. Indeed, 50,000 years ago a Neanderthal in Iraq was killed by a spear that scientists believe was thrown by one of the first early European modern humans. The spear impaled the Neanderthal in the chest, leaving a cut mark on one of his ribs. Through rigorous analysis, Researchers concluded the wound was caused by a small arrowhead or spearhead, and that the velocity of impact indicated that it was thrown with a bow or spear thrower. Neanderthals only used heavy spears with large spearheads, which would not have made such a cut mark. This event may have been the opening salvo in the conquest of Europe, as modern humans from Africa replaced the native Neanderthals. The fate of the Neanderthals has preoccupied paleoanthropologists with varying degrees of intensity for over a century. There are many factors that probably played a role in the transition. For example, a climate-related factor is the Campanian Ignimbrite volcanic eruption, dated at 39,000 years ago, which had devastating effects on plant and animal life across large areas of southern and eastern Europe, and is linked to a cold weather interval. The event has been attributed to the Arch Flegri volcano, an 8-mile-wide caldera located 12 miles west of Mount Vesuvius, under the western outskirts of the city of Naples, Italy. The eruption was a major volcanic eruption, classified as a 7 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. In comparison, the eruption of the Vesuvius volcano in AD 79, which destroyed Pompeii and Herculaneum, only rates a 5 on the index. Estimates of the date and magnitude of the eruption, and the amount of ejected material have varied considerably during several centuries the site has been studied. However, the most recent dating determined the eruption event at 39,280 years ago, plus or minus 110 years. The event coincides with a number of global and local phenomena, such as widespread discontinuities in archaeological sequences, climatic oscillations, and biocultural modifications. But did this event cause the extinction of the Neanderthal? No. No. It's not true. That's impossible! The super-eruption of the Italian volcano that may have played a role in the Neanderthal's fate was apparently even larger than previously thought. The region experienced the largest volcanic eruption that Europe has seen in the last 200,000 years, and this super-eruption was thought to have played a part in wiping out remaining Neanderthal populations in the eastern Mediterranean. 
but the latest evidence indicates Neanderthals were almost completely extinct by the time of this eruption. Indeed, the eruption coincided with the final disappearance of the Neanderthal in Europe. The environmental stress associated with the eruption may have been the nail in the coffin of the Neanderthals. Nonetheless, the notion remains contested. Anthropologists admit that although the eruption would have affected both modern humans and Neanderthals equally, the capacity of modern humans for resilience and ingenuity, over and above that of Neanderthals, allowed modern humans to recover more quickly at Neanderthals' expense. Volcanologists discovered the super eruption behind the Campanian Ignimbrite event would have spewed 60 to 72 cubic miles, or 250 to 300 cubic kilometers, of ash across 1.4 million square miles, or 3.7 million square kilometers. This is two to three times the, the previous estimate of the volume of ash spouted by the eruption. These findings suggest the super eruption would have spread up to 990 million pounds, or 450 million kilograms, of poisonous sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This air pollution would have cooled the northern hemisphere, driving down temperatures by 1.8 to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, for 2 to 3 years, enough to have severe effects on the environment. The researchers noted that the super eruption took place in what was already an especially cold, dry period in the last ice age. The eruption would have made conditions even worse for the Neanderthal and modern human populations. If the same eruption occurred today, millions of modern European humans would perish. Fluorine laden ash from the eruption that later became incorporated into plant matter eaten by these hominids could have also potentially caused a condition known as fluorosis, which can lead to eye tooth and organ damage. In addition, sulfur dioxide, fluorine and chlorine emissions from the volcano would have generated intense acid rain downwind of the volcano. After the Campanian Ignimbrite volcanic eruption artifact assemblages assigned to the classic Aurignacian, an industry associated with modern human skeletal remains that seems to have developed in Europe, spread throughout the continent. But there was another apocalyptic climate event that occurred a few thousand years before this eruption, that may well have been what doomed the Neanderthalers. Europe is a little peninsula that happens to have a large amount of spectacular archaeology. The evidence shows that on reaching Europe, the Cro-Magnons with fully modern brains, outsmarted the Neanderthals, driving them to extinction by 40,000 years ago, and leaving their indelible cultural mark on the land. These modern humans entered Europe as a colonizing species, and probably were characterized by comparatively low population density as they expanded into Neanderthal territory, and adapted to new environmental conditions. Low density might be expressed in terms of smaller residential group size, larger home ranges and higher mobility requirements. The initial phase of modern human colonization of Europe, therefore, could be represented by a relatively small number of archaeological sites and human skeletal remains. Their visibility probably would be even lower in landscapes where natural shelters, such as caves, are scarce. However, there is reason to believe that modern humans had acquired some unique abilities to colonize new environments. These include technology which exhibits a pattern of accelerating innovation and expanding complexity during the Upper Paleolithic. The use of symbols also may have conferred some unique organizational abilities on modern humans, and the creation of novel technologies and organizational structures may have played a significant role in the dispersal of modern humans, and our seemingly rapid colonization of a variety of habitats and climate zones. In this scenario, Neanderthals represented a competitor species for modern humans in Europe, especially with respect to large mammal prey. With this in mind, it should be noted that comparative analysis of caves in France suggests that there was an emphasis on super herbivores, such as mammoth and rhinoceros by the Neanderthals. As for modern humans, there is evidence for exploitation of smaller vertebrates, which might have reduced niche overlap with both competitors. If you're not yet subscribed, please click that big red button now, so you don't miss any of our highly compelling videos. Thank you. The weakening of Earth's magnetic field may also have been involved in the extinction of the Neanderthals. 
a weak magnetic field could have led to reduced protection from ultraviolet radiation. Eventually this could have led to health problems that contributed to the decline of our big-headed cousins. Even though it was short, the North Pole wandered across North America, towards the New England, and then back again across to the West Coast, then zoomed down through the Pacific to Antarctica, hung out there for about 400 years, and then shot back up through the Indian Ocean to the North Pole again. But this pales in comparison to the total magnetic reversal that occurred 795,000 years ago and lasted for an estimated 22,000 years. The Earth is a giant magnet, because its core is solid iron, and swirling around it is an ocean of molten metal. This churning creates a huge magnetic field, one that wraps around the planet and protects it from charged cosmic rays coming in from outer space. Sometimes, for reasons scientists do not fully understand, the magnetic field becomes unstable, and its north and south poles can flip. The last major reversal, though it was short-lived, happened around 42,000 years ago. Volcanic activity during the flip produced a distinctive iron signature as the molten lava cooled and locked the iron into place. Iron molecules embedded in sediments around the world also captured a record of this magnetic wobble, which unfolded over about a thousand years. The magnetic field is in a constant state of change. It moves around, gets stronger and weaker and occasionally reverses its poles. When this happens, the magnetic field gets weaker. During the reversal that took place around 42,000 years ago the magnetic field is estimated to have fallen to just 5% of its current strength. Earth's magnetic field extends from the planet's interior far into space. It protects the planet from the solar wind, a stream of charged particles coming from the sun. If these particles were able to impact our atmosphere it could strip away the ozone layer that protects the planet from UV radiation. It is this reversal event that helped wipe out a number of mammal species in Australia and Eurasia, including Neanderthals. As the field got weaker, more UV radiation from the sun was able to get through, impacting the health of animals and plants by damaging their DNA. Over time, this could have led to mutations that would have been detrimental to the health of the light-skinned Neanderthals. By looking at the past 800,000 years, the timings of branching episodes of the human family tree can also be linked to the magnetic field, suggesting UV radiation has played a big role in our evolutionary history, leading to genetic mutations that isolated different populations, making them biologically incompatible. But how did modern humans survive the weakening field, when Neanderthals did not? This is due to differences in the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. This receptor controls sensitivity to UV radiation, and the study suggests that humans were better protected from the harmful effects than Neanderthals. The role of UVB, the radiation that causes sunburn, in reducing megafaunal populations, including Neanderthals does not involve an instantaneous blitzkrieg, but rather an accumulation of UVB-triggered mutations, over 30 generations or so. Nonetheless, many scientists are skeptical of the connection of UV radiation with Neanderthal extinction. However, what I could see being reasonable here is if the Neanderthal population was already reduced and stressed, then adding UV damage might contribute to that. Neanderthal populations had already been greatly reduced by the arrival of modern humans in the preceding 10,000 years. Then, if there were any remaining pockets of Neanderthals after 42,000 years ago, they were totally wiped out by the volcanic eruption less than 3,000 years later. Thanks for watching. Please check out these other videos or join us in the comments section.